Good morning. It is great to be here today to celebrate the backbone of our state, I-70, or Interstate 70. We're proud of our state's contribution to this national lifeline and economic engine. The first completed section of America's interstate system finished after President Eisenhower signed the Federal Aid Act of 1956 was built here in Kansas. It was an eight mile section just west of Topeka and working section by section, I-70 was built across the entire state in less than 14 years. That first eight mile section cost about $200,000 per mile and Jeff and Senator Billinger, I wish we could get those prices now. <laughs> In the past 20 years, the people of Kansas have invested about $1.1 billion in I-70's expansion, and I would say more importantly, repair and maintenance. We will continue to focus on preservation and maintenance of our state's inter interstates. And I'm proud to say that preservation is specifically called out as a top priority in the new Eisenhower Legacy Transportation Program. At KDOT, we are committed to fulfilling that responsibility. Every day, our interstates carry $600 million of freight through Kansas. Every single day. Our interstates are critical to our prosperity, and it takes planning, concrete, rebar, and good old-fashioned hard work to build the interstates. It's my honor to represent the hardworking men and women of KDOT here today. In the past 50 years, KDOT's employees have spent millions of hours building and rebuilding this interstate. And in doing so, we are fulfilling our obligation to President Eisenhower's legacy. We're doing our part to keep the nation moving and our economy growing. That effort continues today and I couldn't be prouder of KDOT's employees and the part that they played in our state's history. I'd like to take a moment and thank the I-70 Association for their stewardship and their advocacy. For over 30 years, your work to build the economies of the cities that stretch 424 miles along I-70 from Goodland to Kansas City have made a tremendous difference for our state. I'd like to thank Beth Ansel for her leadership of the I-70 Association. The work you do makes such a difference. The association organized our ride today in these great vintage cars from the Goodland Car Club, and I had a fantastic ride out here. Where's my new buddy? Thank you, thank you. They were built for the open road and we appreciate them giving us a lift. My sincere thanks for all of your work. And improving the entire nation's transportation network was the brainchild of our favorite son, President Eisenhower. It's kind of an oddly beautiful system that connects us to one another, and it allows us to see our friends and family safely. The open road, it's part of our national identity. We have built them and they have shaped us. Ike began to build his transportation plan many years before he was president. After World War I, he participated in the Army's Transcontinental Motor Convoy. And as part of this great convoy, more than 80 trucks traveled from Washington, D.C. to San Francisco on one of the best highways in the country at the time. And what he observed was a 3,000 mile long, mostly dirt roadway system that caused flat tires and bent axles. Many bridges couldn't handle the weight of the convoy and they collapsed. And when it rained, the river, the, the highway became a river of mud. It was an epic 62 day long trip that he would never forget. Ike's experience impressed deeply on the man who would some be, someday be president. And I think this is a key line. America could not grow if it could not move. And I think the same thing about our state now. In a time when we're asking people to try to stay six feet apart, we are working and investing because we know we're gonna to need to move again. And that's why the passage of the Eisenhower Legacy Transportation Program was so important and why its successful implementation will be essential to the growth of Kansas. Millions of Americans work to build the interstate system. 
and thousands of Kansans will work to repair and rebuild it under the Ike program. We've partnered with the private sector to modify our work processes and practices to allow crucial construction to continue during the pandemic. We've already broken ground on several of those delayed T-Works projects around the state. And those projects mean a paycheck for Kansas families and safer roads for our future. President Eisenhower's interstate system, it's a gift to America and to the great state of Kansas. It's an honor to remember his service today and to celebrate his genius. Today is a good day to rededicate ourselves to building for a brighter future. Thank you all for joining us here today. And we're honored to be hosted by Senator Rick Billinger, who represents the people of Kansas 40th Senate District in Topeka. As a 40, former city commissioner and mayor of Goodland, we couldn't have a better host. He knows this stretch of road pretty well. And Senator Billinger, like General Eisenhower, served our country in the Army and for nearly 30 years has worked the land on his farms in Western Kansas. And I especially wanna give a thanks to all of your support for transportation through the years. This Ike program was passed by a great majority of our legislature with four hours to spare. It was quite an accomplishment. And this is the man that was right behind it every step of the way. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator Lorenz, and uh, welcome. It's good to see a nice crowd here this morning, and uh, I, uh, I would like to uh, welcome a couple of folks here. Um, Mary Eisenhower, welcome to Canarado. Secretary uh, Loveless, thank you for all you've done. We appreciate the help at Smoky Gardens, and welcome to Canarado. I-70 is our connection to the world. And as you stand here listening, you, you just see the trucks and the traffic coming by. It's, it's a uh, economic lifeline for Kansas. I-70 begins in Maryland and it ends in Western Utah, 2,152 miles. I-70 is also the home to the uh, Eisenhower Tunnel, and I'm sure many of you have been to Colorado and through the mountains and through the Eisenhower Tunnel. I remember when I was a small uh, child, uh, my parents and us, when we went to Colorado and went through the mountains and the traffic was not nearly as uh, heavy as it is nowadays, but I remember my dad tooting the horn as we went through the, uh, the tunnel. I-70 is also the home of the uh, Big Red One at Fort Riley and pretty much centrally lo located in the state of Kansas and about centrally located on I-70. And uh, I'm sure that part of the main reason that I-70 and Fort Riley are that close together is because of the uh, importance of the military base there at Fort Riley. I grew up on I-70, about 99 miles east of here. And I remember as a kid when they started the construction to put the overpass over the interstate there in park. And uh, I remember that certain sections we would drive and then all of a sudden we'd be back on two lane. It's switch back and forth and I know how appreciative everyone was when the final piece of I-70 was completed and opened up. And as Secretary Lorenz mentioned, I'm, I'm very proud to, to have served with her. She was the, the leader of our transportation task force before she became secretary of KDOT. And she did a wonderful job. I appreciated being part of that team, the, the uh, task force. And then once we got to working on it uh, last year, I was uh, proud to be the, uh, a 
I'm the vice chair of the Ways and Means in the Senate uh, Budget Committee, and, and we work with within uh, Secretary Lorenz to get this uh, program put together and uh, proud that, that we've got the Eisenhower uh, legacy uh, transportation program for the next 10 years. One other thing uh, I would mention is I represent the 40th Senate District, which is the largest district in the state of Kansas. I represent 14 counties and I-70 starts here at the state line and I represent from the state line to mile marker one, 175. So that's how many miles of I-70 I have in my district. So really proud of, of, uh, of everyone that's uh, involved with making sure that we keep uh, I-70 in good shape. Uh, thank you to KDOT. Thank you to all of our workers. Uh, do a wonderful job of keeping I-70 in, in great shape. And uh, it's my pleasure to help celebrate uh, this anniversary. I'd like to congratulate KDOT, the I-70 Association, and thank you our special guests for coming to Canarado. Appreciate it. And thank you all for being here. Thank you again, Senator, for hosting us and for your support of transportation and the people of Kansas. Uh, now I'd like to introduce another partner in building our state's brighter future who is here to celebrate with us today. You know, people come from all over the country on our interstates to visit Kansas because our state is gorgeous and people are friendly. It's my privilege to introduce your Secretary of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism, Brad Loveless. Thank you, Secretary Lorenz, and thank you for the great partnership that our agencies have. It is wonderful, wonderful to be in Goodland in Northwest Kansas to see you all. It is uh, fantastic to see Senator Billinger in his native habitat. I'm used to seeing him in the Capitol. He looks much more at ease out here. Uh, and uh, my wife, Mindy, is from Hill City, just down the road. So uh, I spent a lot of time out here and it feels like home to me. It is my honor to be here today to acknowledge the value of our state highway system for the travel industry in Kansas. Visitors from all across this land come to Kansas, traveling on our highways to experience our wide open spaces, our beautiful state parks, lakes and wildlife areas, and enjoy the abundant activities that Kansas has to offer. In the year of the pandemic, it's a bit unusual to unveil a new tourism marketing campaign. But that is exactly what Kansas Tourism is doing this year. We believe that this new campaign is just what we need in these times. The To The Stars campaign is a nod to our state motto, Ad Aspera Per Aspera. It speaks to who we are as a state and reminds us that Kansas is a place of dreamers and wild-eyed wonders. It comes at a time when local towns and convention and visitor bureaus are struggling because of lack of tourist dollars. It is a way that our Division of Tourism can support the great partnerships that we have out here. And I'm speaking specifically Goodland, Colby, Norton, Hayes. They, uh, their efforts go on day after day and this is a way to bolster those efforts and so they can promote the many wonders of Western Kansas. To the stars. This optimism combined with Kansas pragmatism will serve us well during this challenging time. 50 years ago, a Kansans wide-eyed dream of a highway system became a reality and has changed the way we travel and the way we live today, as Senator Billinger attested to. Kansas continues to be a great place to visit, whether you're a lifelong Kansan or just discovering our state. Just make sure you do it safely. Kansas to the stars. Thank you, Secretary Loveless. It's great to get to work together with you. 
And um, for those of you, we're also being live streamed right now and we've had great success. So thank you all of you who've tuned in remotely. Uh, I appreciate you being, being with us uh, through, through the virtual medium. You know, I can't think of anything that's more important than family. And I was, um, I was just thrilled to, to understand that we were gonna have a special guest with us today. And for just a moment, I'd like to tell you, as I've really started to learn about the history of President Eisenhower and his foresight, and having visited the Presidential Museum in Abilene, and it hit me like a ton of bricks when I looked at the big table where, where so much planning went into D-Day and the other things. And imagine back in that time when you didn't know how World War II was gonna turn out. What an awesome um, responsibility and moment that was. And then when he became president and worked with really the interstate, he delivered the interstate, which is such a remarkable feat because it took lots of statesmanship and bringing lots of different interests to a table to get that thing passed. And it is really remarkable and we so appreciate you being with us today. I'd like to introduce President Eisenhower's granddaughter, Mary Eisenhower. Thank you, Secretary, Senator. Secretary. And good Kansas morning to everybody. It's quite an honor to be here uh, to remember this milestone in our nation's history. Uh, the sand and the oyster, as uh, the secretary so wonderfully explained, uh, the sand and the oyster for this vision of Eisenhower's goes back to, okay, young people, over a hundred years ago, um, when a young, frustrated army officer, Dwight Eisenhower, just post-World War I, led a convoy across America in order to evaluate our readiness in the event that we might have to mobilize should we be attacked on our own soil. The results of this convoy, which spanned from Washington DC to San Francisco, California, were concerning to Ike, as, as has uh, been wonderfully described. Uh, it took over 60 days to make the trek, and there were countless breakdowns, um, uh, poor infrastructure, and of course, the tailspin of World War I. Um, with that, the concern was not only that we could not mobilize quickly, but we could not safely either. Um, this was a concern that stayed in granddad's mind uh, throughout the many uh, decades he would continue to serve this country. Um, so if you fast forward to World War II, um, one of the things that, you know, my, my grandfather always had a way of kind of seeing the, the silver lining on everything. But in the middle of World War II, he looked at the Audubons and he saw the Nazis actually uh, mobilizing very efficiently and very quickly, their troops and their equipment and that kind of thing due to the Audubon. Um, so he kept that in mind as well. Um, and he thought, you know, his vision for America being able to mobilize safely and efficiently um, and, and to move supplies for the, for the military and again, you know, to protect ourselves in the event of, a, of, of an on-soil attack. So his vision came to fruition in 1956 I see some young people in the audience, 1956, that was a while ago, huh? Uh, not too long ago though, because I was born before then. But uh, anyway, uh, the highway, US Highway and Defense System was proposed and enacted as a federal aid um, highway act of 1956. As we know, the highway system was open to all, but what most people don't realize now and this is maybe something that the young people will uh, find of interest, but there were various uh, patches of concrete that were a mile long and straight and level designed to uh, serve as a runway also uh, for landing military aircraft. And the same remains today under the original design. Although I feel hard pressed to find those straight stretches when I'm going through places like Topeka. <clears throat> It's one big loop. <laughs> but ironically, as much as Eisenhower worried about mobilization, and I'm, I'm going to get a little bit personal because uh, yes, I knew him, yes, I'm old. Um, but 
he himself had a pilot's license, but he didn't have a driver's license until he left, the, left office at the age of 71 in 1961. As a military man, he didn't need it. And as president, uh, he had um, secret service and uh, he settled and we did too. We settled right next door to his farm in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, a nice small town. And now he had no secret services. Uh, the secret service left the, the outgoing presidents until Kennedy was assassinated and then they were reinstated. So he actually felt like he needed uh, a driver's license. Now, my grandfather, uh, on a personal note, if you don't mind me deviating, um, was a gadgets person. He loved fast, flashy, you know, um, just gadgets. He, uh, in fact, their computer systems in those days were, you know, three rooms large. What, what I'm right now reading my notes off of, three rooms. <laughs> uh, and he, he loved it though, he thought it was awesome. So you can imagine getting behind a, a, a nice car. Uh, he had a, a wonderful time. He'd take it out for a spin all the time. But unfortunately, there was a little bit of military lead left in his foot. And you can imagine in Gettysburg with a population at the time of about 2000, he was one of Gettysburg's most recognizable citizens. And he would take the car out for a spin or whatever. And you could see the policemen uh, rolling their eyes and going, here he comes again. And they'd, they'd stop him and they kind of let him off with a warning and say, you know, please. But finally, I remember one day um, at the farm, the uh, chief of police came over for a little visit and he and granddad had a Coke and they sat down and they were chatting. Uh, and the conclusion of this conversation was that granddad needed to find a different hobby, which he did. And he hired a driver. <laughs> Today, I wear out I-70, and I, I admit that I feel touched and honored when I see the signs for the Eisenhower interstate system and the General's five stars. I admit that I blow a kiss to it once in a while while I'm driving. And during construction season, it's a kiss and a fist. But again, thank you from the bottom of my heart for honoring Granddad and for remembering him through the Eisenhower Legacy Transportation Program and this lovely dedication today. Thank you for the honor of being here and thank you for being Kansans. Thank you. I, the stories are wonderful. Thank you for sharing with us. Today is a great day and it's a day to celebrate and it's a day to remember and a day to dedicate ourselves to the work that is to come. We've placed, or KDOT has placed, three highway signs just east along I-70 to welcome visitors to Kansas, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of this interstate, and please keep blowing kisses to those signs when you drive by. It is my privilege, and you know, like, I, I, uh, I don't think I should unveil the sign. I would like to ask you to, to unveil it for us, please. I think, I think that is only fitting. You should unveil the sign. Thank you. 